was fun. Um, you know, it's, it's really good to have fun, right? Isn't it good to laugh? The Bible talks about laughter being what? Like medicine. It's really good for your soul. It does something to you. How many know that sometimes things can get pretty heavy in life, right? Anybody in here experiencing anything heavy? I would, I would encourage you, if you're in a season right now where things just seem really heavy and like you're, you don't really know what's going on, I would suggest rent a really funny movie or get around some really funny people and just laugh or go on, just go online or just join a dating app from what I understand. <laughs> I just heard through the gape, great, the gape vine. Or, you know, I mean, it's, listen, God designed laughter, right? He didn't design oppression and heaviness, but how many know that in a world that we live in, it's heavy and oppressive? So our job is to find joy wherever we can. If you hang around people that are always depressed and always negative, find new friends. Seriously. I have to, I have to really guard who I hang out with, because if I hang out with negativity, then I become negative, and I can't afford to be negative, right? Oh, God is so good. Just laugh at that. <laughs> God is so good. Well, I just got a few things during, during worship, and this is really awkward for me. This is really awkward, and I, I, I do awkward things often. So I'm just going to, can I just do this? This is really awkward. Okay. So I got some, I just got some words and I have a word for my husband. Why was so awkward? I'm like, God, I'll just tell him at home. And he's like, no, you're going to tell him now. I'm like, dang it. I know. The Lord says that you're to buy me a, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, I, it was interesting because I had looked at my phone and it was said it said 555. And it was just like that. The Lord said, remind him of Isaiah 55, 5. And through verse 6. And it says, Behold, you shall call nations that you know not, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of all the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek inquire for and require the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And I believe that the Lord says, I, this is a prophetic word, and I, I believe it's a prophetic word, but you guys watch him in this next year, that he is going to go beyond and above anything that you guys could ever think or imagine that he could be as a leader. I believe that he is coming into a season that he has never even thought he can come into as a leader, as a pastor, and I believe as an apostolic voice to nations. You guys are going to see him come into the fullness of what God has put in him to do because he says yes and because of his obedience. So I believe that what we see now is not what we're going to see in a year. So we should take a picture of him because I'm anxious to see what he's going to look like. So anyways, that was awkward. <laughs> but I believe that it was, um, I believe that it really is. I, I believe that, I believe that you have held back. And I believe that you have, have not that you've, this is really awkward. But I believe that as you say yes, and as you just kind of jump off that bridge, I'm not telling you to go jump off a bridge. If anybody's watching, she just told her husband to jump off a bridge. But I believe it's like what I see is like, you know, those, those um, remember when you, when, you, when you were in Australia and you and that friend were going to jump off that bridge, you know, and you were like ready to do it. And your friend was just like, uh, oh, yeah, I'm, he's big and bad till he gets up there. And he's just like, oh, I'm not going to do it. But you were ready to do it. And I feel like there's been things that have has stopped you from like doing that, but I believe that this is a season that you're gonna you're gonna do the adventurous and the things that um, you know you can fill in the blank. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Is that good? Whew. 
<sighs> okay. That took a lot out of me. All right. Clayton. Yeah. He's like, yeah, what do you got? I heard I heard Jeremiah 33.3, 3, actually. You know what that says? It says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know. Do not distinguish and recognize, have knowledge of and understand. That's the Amplified Classic. I would encourage you to look that up in that translation and many other translations and ask the Holy Spirit what he's saying to you in that. And I thought what was interesting is that it is things that fenced in and hidden which you do not know. And I think sometimes you look for the things that you know, but there's things that you don't know that he wants to reveal to you, but you have to look for the things that you don't know. And sometimes that's hard because you don't know. <laughs> it's just like God, right? But I believe this is a season as you call out to him, he will show you the things. And I feel like he wants you to be aware of your surroundings. So it's, it's almost like he will be in places and things that you didn't expect. And I just kind of felt like it was like a treasure hunt. You know, you ever go on a treasure hunt? I remember doing that as a kid in youth group way back in Louisiana where they would, they would give you like, I don't know why they let kids do this, but they did. You know, usually it was at midnight, one in the morning. I know, don't do this, don't do this at home, but they, you, we had a sleepover and we did a treasure hunt. So then they gave us these little clues and you had to go to all these places and one was a graveyard and you had to find this. I know, who were my youth leaders? Anyways, at midnight at a graveyard in Louisiana, Southern Louisiana. But anyways, it's like a treasure hunt. There's going to be clues where you go and it's going to be, it's like God wants to play with you. It's just like this fun game that he wants to do because I think sometimes you can get too serious and he just really wants to, I'm not calling you serious, dude. I'm just like saying. But I think it's like a fun thing. He just wants to have fun with you and just wants you just to relax and just really reveal himself to you. Is that cool? All right. Jeff and Peggy. I, I heard this scripture, 1 Kings 19, 11 through 12. It says, go out. Stand before me on the mountain, and the Lord, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. And I feel like the Lord was saying, again, I might be wrong, you guys can pray about this, but this is just what I feel like he was saying is that maybe you've been looking for him in the fire and in the wind and in the earthquake. But I believe he's saying that he's in the stillness. And what I really am sensing is like that it's the intimacy with him, it's in the quiet, it's in the, it's in the stillness. And I think sometimes we can, we can like, you know, look for the, <sighs> and he's like, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I can be in there and I have been in there and I can do that, but I think in this season for you guys, it's in the quiet and the stillness. And I really believe in that, there's gonna be a form of his intimacy and his heart that he's gonna reveal to you that's gonna really help you in this next season. So that's good, yeah? I, I thought it was good. I'm like, Lord, I'll take that. Um, where's Sebastian? Hi. Sebastian's the cute guy in the beard that's married to the cute girl downstairs. downstairs. <laughs> Olivia's with the kids, aw. No, it's not for her. It's for him, but she can share it later. Anyway, Sebastian, this is, I heard, this is what I heard. This is really good. I heard Gideon. And you know about Gideon? Okay, very cool. You should read and study Gideon. But Gideon was hiding in a wine press, and the Lord found Gideon, who was hiding, 
right? In a wine press, and he finds Gideon in a wine press hiding, and he says, Hey, Gideon, mighty man of valor. He calls him a mighty warrior, right? But Gideon was hiding. So I feel like it's interesting because God didn't confirm Gideon's feelings. So God's not going to confirm your feelings. He's going to call out your identity. And I think this is a season of him calling out your identity. And I feel like if you don't, I feel like you might be frustrated and feel like God doesn't hear you. But I think it's because he's not, it's not that he's not listening, it's that he's not confirming your feelings. But he's calling out your identity and he's calling out your purpose and your calling. Yeah? So just study that. Study that. I think you'll find some really cool things in that. Cool. You guys doing good? You know, I got stung by a bee. I got stung by a bee. And the last time I got stung by a bee, it was a while ago. And I was outside painting a lady's deck. And I had just a little teeny bit, you know, to get. And there was bees swarming around. I thought, this wasn't this time. It was last time. And so I thought, oh, I just want to get this over with. So I just went in for the, went in and I did this. And the bee went, ping, and stung me on my arm. And so I was like, oh, you ever got stung by a bee? I hate that feeling. It's just the worst sensation. And so I got all done, packed all my stuff up, got it in my van, and I went to the grocery store to get a gallon of milk and some eggs. And I go to the checkout, put it down, and I'm standing there, and I'm getting ready to pay. And the lady looks at me, and she tells me whatever she tells me. And I'm like, she goes, do you, do you, are you feeling okay? And I'm like, uh, no. And all of a sudden, I went, <laughs> passed out. So they put me on the front. This was at the old Super Value. Remember the old Super Value? So I'm on the front bench of the Super Value thing. Anyways, long story. Bob came. I don't know how I even got your phone number out, but they got him. He came, and my whole body had swelled up. Like, my lips, everything had, like, I looked like an alien. Like, everything, whatever. He was just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I'm like, hi, honey. Give me a kiss. Anyways, so I'm allergic to bees. So I got stung by a bee on Thursday, Friday. See, I don't remember the day. But nothing happened. I didn't pass out or anything, but, you know, I kind of felt, you know, like my arms started swelling up and stuff like that. So I thought, I don't have time. Bob's like, you should take a Benadryl. So I'm like, okay. So I took, like, one Benadryl because I had things to do and I couldn't get sleepy. How many get sleepy taking Benadryl? I mean, I'm, like, gone. So I took a Benadryl, and then I thought, Okay, I'm good. So starting to hurt a little bit. So I took another Benadryl. And then I took like another one a little later. And then about seven, I thought, okay, I'm almost, I can go to sleep now. So I took five. Yeah. I know it. I didn't know you can overdose on Benadryl. And Bob wasn't there to tell me not to. He was at group. He went to group. So it's his fault. So then Amy came to pick up Leo because I babysit my grand dog. So I, she came to pick up the dog, and I thought, okay, so I'm going to take five more so then I can go to bed. Because my arm kept swelling up. You know, it was like really getting swollen, and you know how it swells? It hurts, and I couldn't move it. And yeah, I know it. So I took, I don't know, five or six Benadryl. So Bob comes home, and he's like, are you okay? I honestly don't remember hardly anything of that night. But yeah, he, the next morning he comes in the living room, and I'm on the couch. And he's like, did you sleep on the couch? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't even know how I got on the couch. But Simba and I slept on the couch, and I did make it through, and I woke up eventually on Friday. And so, yeah, don't do that. You can, you can, you can overdose on yes. it. I didn't know that. But anyways, okay. It's a funny story. And then I went to a musical, and then everything was better. So see, I blame it on menopause. I took Benadryl that I shouldn't have taken. We're going to add that to the thing. That's right. It's not my fault. So Taylor, in worship, I heard this, I heard this, this scripture kept going over in my, in my head, and it's Zechariah 4, 6. And it says, not by, 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 not by might. And in the New Living Translation, it says force. So not by might or force, not by power, 
but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then I heard Psalm 4610. You know what that says? Be still and know that I am God. So in that Psalm 4610 where it says be still, it actually is a military term. So it's not like be still and know that I am God. It's actually be still, watch, wait, and see that he is God. And so I think that this season for you is it's not by your might, it's not by your power or you trying to force it, but it's by his spirit because it's all about him. And you're going to stand by and watch and see that he is God because it's going to only be him because he wants the glory. So isn't that fun? I just was like, that's cool. And then it says in the Passion Translation in Psalm 4610, I like the Passion Translation, it says, surrender your anxiety. That's probably for 99% of the people in this room and watching online, right? Surrender your anxiety. Do you know that God cannot take anything that's not surrendered? So if you're struggling with something, your job is to surrender that thing so he can consume it and that he can give you something else in return. Surrender your anxiety, be still, and realize that I am God. I am God above all the nations, and I am exalted throughout the whole earth. Isn't that fun? I love that scripture. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. How many in here try to force things and make things happen? Does it ever work out for you? It doesn't. Sometimes we just need to be still. And in that being still, it, it, there's a scripture in um, Isaiah 40. Oh, somebody help me. Uh, where it says, they that wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 46. I know it's where it's at on my Bible. Down here and up here. 46. 28? No. Somebody look it up for me. But it says, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. That's interesting because it doesn't mean that those that wait just sit and do nothing. It actually means those, those that anticipate God are ready to do something. will renew. That's where we renew our strength. We will mount up with wings as eagles. We will walk and we will not faint. Isn't that wonderful? That we don't, listen, we don't have to do things in our own strength. You're not designed to do things in your own strength. That's why the Holy Spirit comes and lives and moves and dwells inside of you so that you can do things with him. Right? The Holy Spirit comes on you for others, but he comes in you for you. And when we partner with him and when we actually walk with him and in step with him and are led by the Spirit, then we accomplish the things that he has for us to accomplish. And it's a lot easier. Right? All right. How many love babies? I love babies. Little Hazley, right? Hazley. Isn't that a beautiful name? Like, do you mind, guys mind if I hold her? No, I'm kidding. All right, I'm going to be done. I'm just going to give you guys a verse. You guys ready? And then we're going to call it good. I don't like to prolong things that don't need to be prolonged. How many had experienced Jesus tonight? Amen? Amen. I'm just going to read a scripture that I feel like the Lord has, has laid on my heart. Um, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Do you know that you can become really familiar with scripture? How many know Proverbs 3, verse 5? What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I want to caution you guys to not become too familiar with the word of God. Because when you read this scripture, I would read it in different translations. Read it in like 10 different translations. So you can find that thing that really sticks out. I'm going to read it in the Passion. It says, trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. Do you know what gets you in trouble? 
is when you try to be the Holy Spirit. Your own opinions and your own thinking is like, oh, I heard from God. It's like, are you sure it's God or your own opinions? Sometimes we get in trouble because we become the Holy Spirit. How many moms in here? How many of us have tried to be the Holy Spirit? And how many times has it worked for us? Zero, right? It's like you just try to tell your kids what to do. You try to tell them where to go. You try to tell, you know, just like little hints, right? But it's really difficult to trust in the Lord with all of your heart when we're trying to figure things out. One of the things that it does not say, it does not say, understand the Lord completely. Right? How many understand anything that God does? Usually we do later. We're like, ah, oh, okay, I should have had a V8. Right? But where we get stuck and where we get frustrated and where we get hung up is we try to understand when he's saying to trust. Like Becky said, it's all about trust. And if, I trying to, if I'm trusting God, I'm not going to try to figure out what he's doing, why he's doing it, when he's going to do it, where he's going to do it, how he's going to do it. I just simply trust and say, God, I have no idea. I give you my opinions, I give you my frustration, and I trust. And I believe that you have my best interest, that you know better than I do. A lot of us think we know better than God, right? Well, I know better than God, so I'm just going to go do my own thing. That never works out. So trust in, the Lord with, trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all of your heart, rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision that you make. The Lord told me a long time ago, he said, I wish you would include me in your life. How many of us just get up every morning and go about life and forget to involve the Holy Spirit in your day, like in your decisions, right? Do, you, do we ask him, what do you have for me today? Even in your job. Include him. Good morning, Holy Spirit. What are we going to do today? Let's do this thing together. I love verse 6 because it says this, become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you you go. Become intimate with him. Get to know who he is, right? That word intimacy sometimes scares some of us, right? Intimacy is in to me, you see. Get to know Jesus, right? You guys doing okay? Everybody's tired, sleepy? We're almost done. I'll have D to go to the piano, and then we're wrapping it up. You guys ready to go out for pizza? I am. Okay. You guys good? All right. Be intimate, become intimate with him in whatever you do. Give him every part of you. Right? Verse 7, it says, don't think for a moment that you know it all. Just when you think you know it all, that should be a clue that you don't. It's like, well, I know. Mm, maybe not. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes, listen, wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion. Wisdom is found when our devotion is undivided, undevoted, undivided to him. He wants all of our attention. He's kind of greedy that way. But don't you think he deserves it? Undevoted, undivided. Bob, Pastor Bob was talking about the fear of the Lord, the awe and fear of God. It's being aware that he is, and he was, he is, and he will be. 
He is God. Jesus is on the throne. He is king. I heard somebody say this. Jesus is king and he cannot be impeached. He was not voted in and he can't be voted out. He is Lord and nobody can change that. Amen? So why do we worry? Why do we fret? Because the one that nobody voted for is not going anywhere. Amen? It says this. It says, Then you will find the healing refreshment your body and spirit long for. See, sometimes you just read, Trust the Lord with all your heart. But when you trust the Lord with all your heart, that's where the healing refreshment comes for your body. Because not trusting Him brings anxiety, fear, and doubt. But when I can truly trust, then I believe that my whole being can be refreshed in trusting. Amen? I want you guys to stand up. We have a visitor with us tonight, all the way from Oki, Oki, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, Ginger's not here tonight. She will be here tomorrow, but her friend Jamie came with us. She's a part of uh, Ginger and those guys' group down there. So Jamie, welcome. She took the long drive, 12 and a half hours, um, and five kids and no dogs this time. I said, Ginger, I love your dogs, but but don't bring them this time. Just bring the kids or leave the kids and bring the dogs. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Can't leave the kids. I'm kidding. I really love her kids. It's been fun. So anyways, they're going to be here for a little while. So really happy to have those guys. So amen. You guys doing good? Can we just, can we just do something real quick? We've got a few minutes. You guys good? One of the things the Lord has been challenging me on is being aware of his presence. Do you know that we can get so busy that we're not even aware that he's here? You know? So can we just take a minute? Are you guys good? We're just going to take a minute. I want you guys to close your eyes. It's like if he really is Lord, we, I want to give him the opportunity to reveal himself to us tonight. And be aware that he is here and that he's with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you pray in the spirit, I want you to just pray in the spirit with your eyes closed. Just, just reverence this moment. Just put your hands out like you want to receive something. Just say yes to him. Just let him do whatever he wants to do to you. What he wants to do in you. Tell him, just tell him that you love him. Just say, Jesus, we love you. 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 Kelly, I just see like a beam of light coming down from heaven and just like striking you in the top of the head. 
And what I feel like, I feel like the Lord is coming and he's renewing your mind. There's these, this, this thing, it's like thoughts are like, it's like almost like a whirlwind of thoughts. And sometimes, I don't know if you get stuck in your head sometime, but I feel like the Holy Spirit's coming and he's just gonna, there's just the thing that's gonna happen. And all of a sudden you're gonna realize, I don't do that anymore. But I believe it's a divine, it's a divine encounter that's gonna happen. And he's gonna really reveal himself to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brian and, and, and Nancy, I just hear the word faithful. Every time I look at you, it's like faithful. It's like faithful. It's like old faithful. I'm not calling you old. I mean, it's just that, you know, there's, there's, there's just this thing that's in you. It's like, it's a tenacity, but it's just faithful. And so it's sometimes we can just take that lightly maybe, but to not because God sees, he hears, he hasn't forgotten. And when he sees you, that's what he sees as faithful. And so just thank you for your faithfulness. Brian's always there. Nancy too. Might have been a little late today, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. Brian's amazing. He does great at sound. We're, aren't you thankful for sound? Aren't you thankful for the words on the screen? So, you know, we take those for granted that the words are on the screen. Like Colton, like, nails it. But Colton's not going to be up there forever. So we're going to need some PowerPoint people that want to run that thing so we can all read the words. Because he's pretty soon, gonna, you guys are going to see him up here. That guy can play the keys. Yeah. And he can sing, too. But anyways, God's doing a great thing. All right, Lord, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for your people. Jesus, we love you. God, I just pray that we would not become familiar with your presence, that we would not become familiar with your word. God, that we would not become just so haphazard and so much in a hurry that we miss what you're doing in front of us. God, I just break off a spirit of apathy, a spirit of indifference. God, just the busy, just the, the, the weariness of the world and all of that stuff. God, I just break that off your people in Jesus' name that we would receive joy and that we would experience joy because it's the joy of the Lord that's our strength. So God, I thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. And I thank you for the season that we are in because we are gonna see a move of God that we have never seen in our entire life. And we say yes in Jesus' name. And the people say, amen, amen. The ministry team, come up here. If you need prayer, come on up here. Otherwise, have a great night. We'll see you in the morning.